Hi, Stamping Friends. It's Marilyn Wagner coming to you from Spruce Grove, Alberta, Canada. Stamping Creations with Marilyn. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Spruce Grove. And I am staying warm, even though we're in a, a definitely a deep freeze here in this part of, of Canada. But we are blessed that we have heat, our furnace is working, our stove is working, everything's great. So hope it is where you are as well. Thank you for joining me. Come on and say hi. Let me know where you're watching from, whether it's from a certain town, whether it's from on your couch, wherever. Just just touch base and, and keep in touch. I love the community that we've, we've built together. Some of you come back each week, which I really enjoy, and I do read all the comments, whether I can see them coming up and answer you as we go through this, or whether it's afterwards, I will comment. Hello, Karen. Good to see you again. Saw you last night on another another uh, demonstrators project. So great, great community we have with, um, hello Rhonda, with lots and lots of friends, new friends coming on. So like I say, let me know where you're coming from. I have a couple of uh, announcements. Some of you have heard them before, but I will go over them again because deadlines are coming. As you know, we're coming to the end of the year. So while I'm turning my camera down, I have a cute, I think it's a cute project to share with you tonight. And while I'm getting the camera and the, and the desktop all set up for that, why not let me know what you have planned for 2022? Not necessarily crafting, just if you have plans of some sort that are happening. Um, I'm sure you're like me that this time of year you kind of look at, okay, this is what I did last year, this is my to-do list, what I might have to do soon, and what well, I might have to do in a few months. So let me know what's on your list and how that is all going. And I'm going to turn the camera down and we will get the desk set up. So as usual, you get to see the other side of my office, my craft area, my office, whatever it is. And try and get the camera low enough that you can see what I'm going to build. And try not to shake you too bad, but to me that looks like it's good. Hello, Linda. And Sharon, I saw your name go by there, so that's great. Good to have you ladies here with me. Please chat amongst yourselves as well. Looks like everything is happening in the right place. But I need to see your comments, so I'm going to look for that. And see if I can figure it out. So as you can see, if you read my... Um, sorry... If you read my intro to this session, it is a, a little gift bag inside a card that I was able to um, follow from Karen Titus. And she mentioned that she had, it has come back. It was back in 2017 by a lady from Mixed Up Crafts is where she got the idea. I also did another one. I did look at another one by Rachel Tessman, but it was a little more detailed than this one. So I thought, I don't have time to do that. I'll just do this one from Karen Titus. So as we get into that, I want to show you the mini catalog that is retiring here on January 3rd. And most of you have seen it. There's lots of wonderful things in it and a few still left, but they've gone on the last chance list. Some of them up to 50% off. But they are only while supplies last. And I've had a couple of customers call me in the last week or so very disappointed because they thought stamp sets were available until the end of the catalog. Usually they are, but this time they were not. So therefore, some of them have, um, have gone away already. So keep your ears open for anybody having a retiring sale. You might be able to find some there. And clearance rack refresh had happened as well. So there's some... Great deals on the clearance rack. You can always get. Hello, Betty. Welcome, welcome from Red Deer. So nice to see you. And Faye from Prince George. Prepping cards. Yes. Yes. And I'm prepping for this. Some of you have seen it. Some of you have attended before, but you're all invited. It's online totally. Called Stamping Staycation, January 29th. Register now here you can see it all over social media if you're on my newsletter you will get it there and um, 
it's a wonderful day. We're planning, we're excited, we're using new products, and more and more each day, my, my hubby said to me today, why are you making cards? Christmas is over. I said, oh dear, you don't remember. Staycation is coming the end of the month, and I am getting ready for it. So, along with Lillian and Joanne, we are doing that. So the products we are using for that are from the current sale or the celebration and the mini, which are going to start January 4th. So that's, I can't show you the inside of those, but if you do not have a demonstrator and you're in Canada, I'd love to help you out. I have a current host code, it has changed. So please make note of that and I can help you with placing any kind of orders. Okay, so I don't see there's any questions. A number of you are demonstrators on here. If there's questions people have that you can answer, I don't mind you doing that at all. And like I said, I will go back and read all of the comments and answer them. I do, for everybody who's commenting, I will put your name in a draw. Only once. If you comment three or four times, I love it. But your name only goes in once. And at the end of next week's Facebook Live, I will do a draw for that. So tonight, this is the card I'm going to show you how to make. So it's a card. Looks like a card. Again, using the Ever... Ever Eden? Eden's Garden. <laughs> Ever Eden is the paper. Eden's Garden paper. And the paper and the embellishments will not be available after January 3rd. So if you're looking for that, now is the time to get it. The stamp set and the dies are in the new catalog. But get ready. Look at this. Isn't that neat? You open it up and there's a little gift bag which holds a, a gift card. But it could hold a little bit more. As you can see, it's, it's got a bit of width to it. And I'm going to do tonight's a little bit different because on this one, I forgot to put my white paper on first, so I had to, to cut it down actually when I had glue on it, so that was quite a trick. But that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to do the card part first this time. I was so anxious to do the gift bag when I did this one that that's why I kind of forgot to put the, the paper there. So any questions you have as we go, be sure and just put them in the comments and... Like I say, some of the demonstrators that are on here with me will help, or I will help later. So, so we start out with a cardstock piece, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and I will burnish that and remove my little pieces. And this one I'm going to make, I believe, go this way. I wasn't quite sure when I started with that one yesterday. So my next layer is five and a quarter by four, as usual. And I have been using more and more of the liquid glue, as you know. And you can see that I'm using the flip side of that paper because our designer paper does have beauty on both sides. And speaking of that, I have a paper share happening until January 6th, you can register for that. And I do have the papers here. So tonight I don't have a lot of show and tell cards for you, but I would like to share the designer papers, the new designer papers, and let you see them in person. So the inside layer, I'm going to stamp, it's five and a quarter by four, and I'm going to use a stamp out of that stamp set. Let's celebrate everything with my darker green, the Evening Evergreen ink. And I've put my stamp on at an angle so that hopefully I will stamp it straight by looking at the stamp, not the, the block that it's on. So that will be my inside layer. Then for my focal point, this on the outside, I have white that's three and three, three and one quarter, evening evergreen that's three and one eighth, and then my stamped piece is three by three. So to begin with, because I've got the ink out, 
and I'm not very good at leaving it out without getting ink all over everything. So I'm going to turn it over like that to stamp. And this is one of our distinctive stamps. So it stamps light and dark with just one, one uh, stamp. Sorry, trying to think if I'm going to put this one in the portrait how I want it on my paper. So then it's just a matter of attaching those and let me know, have any of you, some of you I have mailed catalogs to from the having Stampin' Up! mail them and we're kind of getting concerned here in Canada that the catalogs have not been received yet. Have any of you received your catalog in the mail from me or any other demonstrator that you might be getting it from? Or if you sent one to yourself, have you received it yet? Please let us know. I know that if you, we were to call Stampin' Up, they would say, sorry, once it's in the mail, it's out of our hands. We can't do anything, so I'm not going to do that. But just curious to know if any of you have received them. I send one to myself all the time and I have not received it but because of our deep freeze I uh, haven't gone for the mail for two days now so maybe it's sitting there that will be a surprise so just a little bit of of a border on each of these as you can see if you want a bigger border by all means there is room when you go to put it on the the front of the card as you can see there's still room to to make it bigger if you so desire. So I've got that stamped. I've got this for my inside. My greeting with the hello there is going to be on this. And I'm going to try to stamp it straight. And then to get the the flagged ends, all I've been doing is cutting up in the center, cutting over from corner to corner, and there is my flag. There are, this one's going to be a little bit farther, so I'm still going to try and do it the same size. There are punches available that will cut that, but I find for just smaller ones like this. It's uh, just as easy to do that. And yeah, it's probably not perfect, but it's it will do for what I'm doing. Okay, so now I will put those pieces together. And because I've got quite a few layers here and because this adds thickness to the card, I'm going to not use dimensionals on most of this and I am going to lay that and try to have equal amounts around. Now I saw I saw Betty on here earlier. Betty is one of those friends that I talked about recently in one of my posts that I've had forever. We grew up not very far from each other, went to school all the way through. I was a little bit behind her, but we were there. And it's great to keep in touch with, with friends like that. So, Betty, I'm not sure if you've done anything like this before, but please, if you have questions, be sure and pop them in the comments. And we will... Um, make sure they're answered. Okay, so I think that is going to have dimensionals, which are these foam adhesive pieces. And like I say, I'm going to basically finish this and then we're gonna do the little bag for the inside and then we are going to look at some of the new designer paper. So stick around. So again, kind of a monochromatic color with using this side of the designer paper, but I do like it. 
and I'm going to put a five and a half by one inch strip on the inside just to kind of tie it all together. And of course, depending on what you like, you could use either side of that paper. And because my card is, if I cut it right, it's five and a half. It should fit the whole length. It's over a little bit on that side. And just flip it over and trim it like that. And there it is. So now comes the fun part. Put the lid on my glue because that's a new glue and it seems to run quite a bit. So there's my card. And next I have more designer paper to make the little bag. I have a piece that is three by 11 and it's scored in many different places. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and I like using this for this kind of a project because I can put all my markers and I don't really have to look at what where I'm scoring. I'm going to score at half and one inch. I'm going to score at five, five and a half, and six, and again at ten and ten and a half on that side. Then it gets turned and scored at three eighths of an inch. So it's at three. One, two, three is it's eight inch markings, so I'm just going to score down there. And just a reminder, if you're using designer paper, don't press too heavy with that score tool because it could end up tearing it. So you can see the score lines on this side better. So to, uh, which way am I going to do it? Actually, I am going to fold it first. So I'm going to fold on all the score lines. And it doesn't matter which way at the time at the moment because you can always fold them back the other way but I am making sure that it's it's lined up on the sides so that it uh, will line up when you put it inside the card so can you see where this is going if you and I will fold the bottom as well. But if you look at this, it's going to end up making the little gussets that you have. That one's gotta go the other way. Well, the gussets that you have on either end of a bag and then the bottom folds and that's what attaches inside the card. So I just thought it was really a cute, cute idea. We're always looking, seems like, for gift ideas to give gift cards. And like I say, in this one, I think you could put probably the after eight dinner mints would fit because they're thin. So I'm going to trim here in the center from between all three of these. Just a minute, got to get it the right direction of these uh, score marks and on the end as well. And it's just taking out a bit of the bulk and going to make it easier when we put it all together. So if you have designer paper that when it's scored, you can't see it very well. Thank you, chocolate. Yes, Faye, sounds yummy. So I will end up putting these two together and I know when uh, Karen Titus did it, she used just the liquid glue. I am going to use my tear and tape because I really don't want it coming apart. So, I hope I put it on the right side, right? So if I put it there and then I'm going to, oh, I need one on each piece, each side, because I want it together. And like I say, 
after watching um, Rachel Tessman, there's different ways of doing this on hers, just to give you a, a hint. She had a bit wider paper and she did a score line along the top as well. And I'm going to lose my desk at the moment. She uh, did some stamping. She did it on white computer paper, actually, because it's quite thin and you don't want the bulk. And was able to do some stamping on it, which is another neat idea. Now, because that's, try and get that where you can see it and I can see it, and it all goes together. So there is our little gift bag. Then we have to somehow get our handles in and Again, being my trial one, this bothers me that it's out here. So this time I cut my my um, twine or whatever, just a minute, it's got a name. Simply Elegant Trim, I cut it at four inches instead of six. So it will be a little bit shorter. And also when Karen Titus did it, she just eyeballed where she punched it. Most of you know that I'm not that kind of person. I like things being exact and even. So I am going to, not on that side, where did I do that? There. I am going to uh, use this piece of paper that I have to measure where I'm going to punch those. And maybe they're down a little bit far, but at least they're even. That's a, a crocodile that we used to have, and I hung on to it. So, well, I should have done that before I glued it together. Oh, well. Learn. Oh, and now I put that down too far in my thread. My, okay. What do you do with it? We will have longer, because look at how far down that is compared to how far down it is on that one. So the other thing that I did was when I finished cutting off an inch on there, because it's only 11 inches long, I had a three inch by one inch piece. And I am going back to the six inches on this one now, guys, which is so handy to have this to uh, measure right there. So I cut those so that I can put them on the inside, and that's why I should have done this sooner. <laughs> oh, well, do as I say, not as I do, okay? I'm going to run a little bit of glue on the inside there to hold those, hopefully. And it would be nice if I could, <clears throat> could undo the ends of this, but... Because I use tear and tape, you know what? Hopefully, you guys got time. I'm going to totally do another piece <clears throat> because that is not going to work. So, three, I have to take off an inch. I'm going to cut that in half because I want my pieces to hold the tape together. Hopefully you guys can chat while I'm doing this because I'm going to, again, do my score lines. And try to do it right this time because that is not working. Okay. So, wherever you are, I know I've talked to some of you recently and it's cold where you are too. We have, we live in a, um, 
over 50 subdivision where <clears throat> a number of people go away for the winter and even if they don't go south which some of them have one lady one of our neighbors is in Edmonton helping out her family and I am house sitting for her as well as as uh, my friends who have gone south and went and checked their houses today and their houses are fine but it is just downright miserable going outside and I think <laughs> Dennis and I've kind of decided that it's partly our age that uh, we don't like the cold I can remember going snowmobiling um, skiing that kind of thing in the cold and okay now I know what happened my there see I knew something had happened as to why those ended up down so far but I'm going to show you how I should have done it okay now that's too too close so and we haven't been I see um, our granddaughter was in a a hockey tournament this week and unfortunately we did not get into Edmonton to watch the roads well I don't know about the roads but the weather's just not conducive to us going out at our age and if we don't have to so and our daughter seems quite happy when she hears that okay so now what I should have been doing before is I'm going to add a little bit of tape runner along here and when I put these in they will stick and my handle will be short and sweet okay does that make sense hopefully I haven't lost too many of you and uh, I will put dimensions in the uh, description afterwards and I do share this video over to YouTube so if you're watching on YouTube I'd love to have you or if you're not if you're watching on here and you haven't been to my YouTube channel I'd love to have you go there and support me by by uh, subscribing to that as well so then these pieces I'm just going to place on here and try to get them fairly even so that they hold the edge of that trim where it belongs. There, that's what I should have done in the first place. Excellent baby shower card, yes, yes. So now, let me get back to where I was before. Let's put the, the tear and tape there and put the edges together. You know what? I'm going to try this one with the, just the liquid glue. Why not? Lots of different things. Just to show you that you can do whatever works for you. So on this, because it's liquid glue, I can move it to line it up and if you hold it just a little bit it will stay stuck so there's my edges I've got my bone folder to burnish that again and on these what's going to happen I'm going to end up putting the tear and tape and they are going to stick on either side in the card so those I will use tear and tape because of the pressure and the number of times it will be opened well at least when you send it and when they open it the recipient opens it so once we get that done we start with one side peel it off 
and lay it. Can you see? Hold it up, maybe so you can see it a little bit better. I want to lay it back a little bit from that edge because I don't want it binding. So I'm going to do that with it and close it. And then I'm going to take this one off and do the same on that side. And there is our little gift bag. And it even looks fairly straight down there, guys. So, I think that is pretty darn cute. And it will hold a gift card. And much to my happiness, these do not stick out over the edge on this one. So, thanks for staying with me, guys. Now, the only other thing on this one, and probably do the same on here. These embellishments are no longer available after... January 3rd as well, so I am enjoying using them, and I'm going to put them just like holly berries. And I've seen, even though this bundle came out early for the catalog and whatever, I've seen lots of people using the, this set for for birthdays, for hello, for just all kinds of different occasions and for Christmas. So again, a versatile, versatile set. So hopefully that made sense. And like I say, I will put dimensions in the uh, description of the, the video. This one will be the one that I'm drawing for next week. So keep your comments coming. And now let's have a look at I can find it under my other stuff, the designer paper that is in my paper share. So I didn't get to see, oh, glad you like it, Betty, and all the others, thank you. I didn't get to see if anybody has received their catalog yet, but to see the paper in real life, as we call it, is so much better than seeing it in the catalog. This is New Horizons paper, six by six, these are all the colors in it, and I will eventually add circles of cardstock with those colors. But look at the variety. So I'll just flip through them. I won't take a lot of time because there's so many. But you can see how you could just stamp happy birthday on it, and you would have... Linda, you got your catalog. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. I know you're in Spruce Grove, so that's a good sign. You could stamp and not do anything else. You can build scenes with this paper. There's 48 sheets. Whoa, I guess I'm not showing you the backside, am I? <laughs> 48 sheets, and so there are, however many this is, there must be eight of each design. And lots of different colors. And it is written here, and just a note on that, when you get your catalog, it does say colors in the catalog. However, discovered by trying to be ahead and do these sheets up before getting the actual product, that sometimes the colors are not all listed in the catalog, and they are on here. And because my eyesight isn't as young as it used to be, I like to write them out a little bit bigger. So that is the New Horizons. So anybody who signs up for my paper share... I'm going to do eight different designer papers and you will get cardstock to match one for each piece of four by six paper that you're going to get. So that link is in the description of this, this um, video. So Abstract Beauty is, this is something new that Stampin' Up! has only done this, this catalog and they've come out with four by six sheets. Yes, these are four by four because I had to cut them to use them on here. This is how a number of us demonstrators display our paper for our use as well as showing to customers. So again, you can see by, as I flip them, this is the two colors. Each one has some gold on one side and more of a subtle color on the other. And I'm anxious to use these. The, the 4x4 I could certainly use similar to this 
to make a card or just for pieces. I know a number of us have started doing more of pieces like this on the inside, little corners. So you can really make a lot of use out of your paper, but use it. Not like, I know there's been years when I have um, not used my paper as, as much as I should, and I'm really trying to get over that. Sweet Talk is more or less a heart bundle, and I have some bigger pieces here to show you of these. So again, they could be Valentine's, but they could be other things. This has I love you in different languages, hearts, reds, pinks, again, the colors that are in it, hearts, more hearts. This bundle does have dies with hearts. I do not have it. Not saying that I won't end up having it somewhere. That catalog is going to be good till June, so I probably will have some more. Flowering Fields is, these sheets are, well, this is a, what is this? Eight by six. They come in 12 by 12s. So you get lots for your dollars and lots and lots of colors that you can use for many different things. Look at that, it looks just like a, pictures I've seen of tulip fields. Haven't, haven't been able to visit that part of the world, but I really enjoy the, the scenery on TV when I see them. So that's flowering fields. Symbols of fortune is another one with gold in each piece. So it's called a specialty pack and it is a little bit more money, but that's why, because they put gold in it. And most of these papers, it's kind of upside down. This one has birds, more of an oriental theme, but very pretty. And a lot of the papers, um, especially like this one, we get to know eventually, it's shared by Stampin' Up, that their artists actually draw them and then they do the, the papers from them. So it's kind of neat to know that there's people out there that can do that kind of thing. I certainly couldn't. So Artfully Composed is more leaves and subtle. And again, there's dies in this set that will cut out some of them. I believe this one maybe. I don't have them, so I can't, um, can't vouch for that. This one, I know there's a stamp that's similar to that in the set. So again, Stampin' Up, of course, is known for their uh, coordination between colors and stamps, and more so recently with the... Um, they're getting to have more of the dies that will actually cut out stuff on the paper. Heart and Home, this is what I'm going to be doing with all of my, my pages, is to have the cardstock on them as well to see what they're like. This one has little bees, and it's the back side of them are all this wood grain kind of finish. There's flowers, there's fresh freesia, yeah, fresh freesia, there's a blue, that would be Misty Moonlight, more green and yellow, and another green, and I'm not a green lover, but boy, these greens they've come out with recently, like this one, love it. And last but not least, there's a Hay Sports Fan one, and it's more baseball orientated, I believe. They've got play ball, but lots of these, even if there isn't, and I haven't looked if there's dyes to go with them, but you could certainly cut them out quite easily. And this is um, protective gear for umpires, baseball cats. And Betty, if you're still on here, I know your hubby did lots of baseball. And uh, you and I did too. This kind of thing would probably make great scrapbook pages. Again, they come 12 by 12. So lots of variety happening. This is a baseball diamond. I used to, uh, as my dad watched baseball, I would try and keep score just for something to do because even back then, I guess I couldn't just sit and watch TV. So, so those are the sets that you will get, um, four by six, one of each, if you sign up for my paper share. So let me know that closes on January 6th because I do have to order it and whatever. So hopefully, yes, lots of ball in our family. You're right, Betty. 
So now, if there's no other questions, and I, like I say, I will go back and, and read them all and answer, I will bring over my Wheel of Winning. And this is the card we made last week. It has the same color family because I have lots of that paper and I'm trying to use it up. It has die cut, it has the embellishments, and it has the cotton paper pleated. And just a different fold. Really like this fold. I think I'll be using lots of it. The other thing that I want to let you know, in case you're interested, is that I am going to be doing Christmas card class each month. I've decided that I do not want to panic, like I did this year, trying to get everything done in the last few minutes. So I uh, am going to start that on January 13th. So if you're interested in that, just uh, watch my social media, my emails, my, um, my, my website, whatever. Or let me know. Send me an email and I will certainly put you on the list. I, I'm going to do that whether there's many or fewer or more come to, to play with me. So for this card, I have everybody's name. There are, I think there was 14 of them in this Wheel of Winning, and I'll try not to get too much glare on it, and I'm going to hit the spin, and whoever's name comes up will get the card. Gail B. Congratulations. That will be in the mail to you once I go outside again, which will be tomorrow or the next day, because it's supposed to warm up for a couple days. So, so hopefully... You enjoyed that as much as I did, and I look forward to seeing some that you make like this. If you do, you're more than welcome to post them underneath this video on my, uh, my Facebook page for others to see. Let's continue making a great community out of this Stampin' Up. I love it. See you next week. Bye now.